Hey, have you noticed that you never seem to get laid much on Thanksgiving? I think it's because all the coats are on the bed. That's my job, thinking up goofy shit. <laughs> Coming around every now and then, letting you know what it is. Or reminding you of things you already knew, but forgot to laugh at the first time. <laughs> this is my office over here. Let's face it, if this is my job, this must be my office. Looks like an office to me. Got me a little desk here. Kind of nice desk. And a chair. The chair goes with the desk, of course. You could sit on the chair at the desk, if you like, making them a set. Or you can use the chair as an occasional piece. Which is nice to have in the office, I always say. Oh, yeah. Actually, this is just a place for my stuff, you know? That's all, a little place for my stuff. That's all I want, that's all you need in life is a little place for your stuff, you know? I can see it on your table. Everybody's got a little place for their stuff. This is my stuff, that's your stuff, that'll be his stuff over there. That's all you need in life, a little place for your stuff. That's all your house is, a place to keep your stuff. If you didn't have so much stuff, you wouldn't need a house. You could just walk around all the time. A house is just a pile of stuff with a cover on it. You can see that when you're taking off in an airplane. You look down and you see everybody's got a little pile of stuff. All the little piles of stuff. And when you leave your house, you gotta lock it up. Wouldn't want somebody to come by and take some of your stuff. They always take the good stuff. They never bother with that crap you're saving. All they want is the shiny stuff. That's what your house is, a place to keep your stuff while you go out and get more stuff. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta move, gotta get a bigger house. Why? No room for your stuff anymore. <laughs> Do you ever notice when you go to somebody else's house, you never quite feel 100% at home? You know why? No room for your stuff. <laughs> Somebody else's stuff is all over the goddamn place. And if you stay overnight, unexpectedly, they give you a little bedroom to sleep in. Bedroom they haven't used in about 11 years. Someone died in it 11 years ago. And they haven't moved any of his stuff. Right next to the bed, there's usually a dresser or a bureau of some kind, and there's no room for your stuff on it. Somebody else's shit is on the dresser. Have you noticed that their stuff is shit and your shit is stuff? <laughs> I'm saying, get that shit off of there and let me put my stuff down. Sometimes you leave your house to go on vacation. And you gotta take some of your stuff with you. Gotta take about two big suitcases full of stuff. When you go on vacation, you gotta take a smaller version of your house. It's the second version of your stuff. And you're gonna fly all the way to Honolulu. Gonna go across the continent, across half an ocean to Honolulu. You get down to the hotel room in Honolulu and you open up your suitcase and you put away all your stuff. There's lots of places in the hotel room to put your stuff. Here's a place here, put a little bit of stuff there, put some stuff here, put some stuff. You put your stuff there, I'll put some stuff. Here's another place for stuff. Look at this, I'll put some stuff here. And even though you're far away from home, you start to get used to it, you start to feel okay because after all, you do have some of your stuff with you. That's when your friend calls up from Maui and says, hey, why don't you come over to Maui for the weekend and spend a couple of nights over here? Oh, no. Now what do I pack? Right, you've got to pack an even smaller version of your stuff. The third version of your house. Just enough stuff to take to Maui for a couple of days. You get over to Maui, I mean, you're really getting extended now when you think about it. You got stuff all the way back on the mainland. You got stuff on another island. You got stuff on this island. I mean, supply lines are getting longer and harder to maintain. 
You get over to your friend's house on Maui and he gives you a little place to sleep, a little bed right next to it is a windowsill or something. You put some of your stuff up there, you put your stuff up there, you got your visine, you got your nail clippers and you put everything up. It takes about an hour and a half, but after a while you finally feel okay. So you say, all right, I got my nail clippers, I must be okay. <laughs> That's when your friend says, hey, I think tonight we'll go over the other side of the island, visit a pal of mine and maybe stay over. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> now what do you pack? Right, you gotta pack an even smaller version of your stuff the fourth version of your house. Only the stuff you know you're gonna need. Money, keys, comb, wallet, lighter, hanky, pen, smokes, rubber, and change. <laughs> well, only the stuff you hope you're gonna need. I had kind of an interesting morning uh, this morning. I call it interesting, I use that word because I don't have a nice day anymore. Frankly, I don't bother with them. I feel as if I've outgrown the nice day. Let someone else have a few. I've had my share. Why should I be hogging all the really nice ones? So I feel like I'm beyond the nice day now. Of course, people still want me to have one. Everybody wants me to have a nice day. Have a nice day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you give me my fucking change, please? Some people are really insistent. I said, have a nice day! All right, all right, okay, goddammit, all right! That's the trouble with have a nice day. It puts all the pressure on you. <laughs> now you've gotta go out and somehow manage to have a good time. All because of some loose-lipped cashier. <laughs> have a nice day. Maybe I don't feel like having a nice day. Maybe, just maybe, I've had 63 nice days in a row. And by God, I'm ready for a crappy day. <laughs> Let someone wish me a crappy day. I never hear that. Have a crappy day. <laughs> That's no problem at all. All you have to do is get up some mornings. There's no planning involved. You know the trouble with that nice day stuff for me is that word nice. It's just such a soft, kind of flabby word. You know, there's no character to it. Nice. Isn't he nice? Oh, he is so nice. And she's nice too. Isn't that nice? It's like fine. How are you? Fine. Bullshit. <laughs> Nobody's fine. Hair is fine. How's your hair? Fine! That makes a lot more sense to me. Some guys are great. You ever hear that? How are you? Great! Isn't this great? God damn, this is great! Look, they're gonna kill that guy. Isn't that great? Not me, I'm not nice, I'm not fine, I'm not great. People ask me how I am, I say I'm fairly decent. No superlatives, nothing to gossip about. I say I'm relatively okay. Or moderately neato. Then they have to ask their children how I am. If I'm in a particularly jaunty mood, I'll look them right in the eye and say, I'm not unwell, thank you. Which pisses them off because they have to figure that one out for themselves. But anyway, got into an argument this morning with my Rice Krispies. I distinctly heard, snap, crackle, fuck him. <laughs> I don't know which one of them said it, you know. I was reaching for the artificial sweetener at the time and was not looking directly into the bowl. But I told them, I said, well, you can all just sit right there in the milk. As far as I'm concerned, you can sit in the milk until I find out which one of you said that. Little mass punishment for my breakfast food. The idea is to turn them against one another. Just sit in the milk. Of course, don't be me, big punishment. That's what they do anyway. That's their job, sitting in the milk. 
You've seen those Rice Krispies floating along. <laughs> Little beige blisters of air, riding proudly in the milk. But you can't sink them. They ought to use them in life jackets. That's where they need them. <laughs> you can't sink Rice Krispies. They float for a long, long time. Rice Krispies would float for a week if you leave the dishes out. I do. Rice Krispies would float until you gotta knock them off the side of the bowl. What are you doing? Washing the dishes. Do you ever notice that the Rice Krispies highest on the bowl dry first? It's because they're closer to the sun. Isn't that interesting? Yes, there is a little science in the show each and every evening. But those Rice Krispies will float forever. Well, you know what they do, they gather together. They gather together in little groups. Little groups of eight, 10, 12, sometimes 14, but always an even number. Little colonies of Rice Krispies. And you can't sink them, you try to sink them with a spoon, they come up over the side. That's what the fruit is for. Sinking the Rice Krispies. A good sized peach will take down 80 or 90 of them every time. If I'm really pissed, I'll drop a watermelon on you. <laughs> Have you noticed that most of the women who are against abortion are women that you wouldn't want to fuck in the first place, man? I don't know. <laughs> There's such balance in nature. I'm the icebox man at our house. I'm icebox man! I answer the call when there's a need at the icebox. Two very important responsibilities. The first one is keeping people from standing with the door to the refrigerator open for more than 45 minutes at a time. God, that gets me mad. You wanna close that goddamn door, please? You wanna close the door? You're letting out all of the coldness I saved overnight. Come on, close the door. You know, some guy smoked eight joints and he's gonna inventory my refrigerator. Um, um, uh... Here, here's $50, get down to the Burger King, will you, God? I'll save more than that on electricity alone. Close the goddamn door, will you? Look, if you want to know what's in there, why don't you take a Polaroid picture and go away and look at the picture and then come back and figure out what you want? Years ago, we didn't have Polaroid cameras. We had to make an oil painting of what was in there. Well, I don't let it get me down, because there's a bigger responsibility. And that is getting into that refrigerator and deciding which things need to be thrown away. Most people will not take that responsibility. Most people will just go and get what they want, leave everything else alone and say, well, someone else wants that. Someone else will eat that. Meanwhile, the thing is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and is in fact stuck to the rack. Well, I've got to go in there and decide when to throw things away. Chocolate pudding? Does anyone want this last chocolate pudding? I have just one chocolate pudding left. It's only pulled away from the side of the dish about three inches all the way around. And there's a huge fault running through the center of the pudding. Actually, it's nothing but a ball of skin at this point. Does anyone want a ball of fault-ridden chocolate pudding skin? I'm only going to throw it away. Do people do that with you? offer you some food that if you don't eat it, they're only gonna throw it away. Well, doesn't that make you feel dandy? Here's something to eat, Dave. Hurry up, it's spoiling. Something for you, Angela. Eat quickly, that green pot is moving. Here, Bob, eat this before I give it to an animal. You ever been looking through the refrigerator and you come across an empty plate? <laughs> Boy, that starts me to wondering. Did something eat something else? <laughs> Maybe the olives ate the tuna. Maybe that chicken isn't really dead yet. Actually, I picture a little mouse with gloves and a parka on, you know. 
just waiting for the lights to go out. Perhaps the worst thing that can happen is to reach into the refrigerator and come out with something that you cannot identify at all. You literally do not know what it is. Could be meat, could be cake. Usually at a time like that, I'll bluff. Honey, is this good? Well, what is it? I don't know. I've never seen anything like it. It looks like meat cake. Well, smell it. It has absolutely no smell whatsoever. It's good. Put it back. Somebody is saving it. It'll turn up in something. That's what frightens me. That someone will consider it a challenge and use it just because it's in there. It's a leftover. What a sad word that is. Leftover. How would you like to be a leftover? Well, it wouldn't be bad if they were taking people out to be shot. I might even volunteer. But you know, leftovers make you feel good twice. Did you ever think about that? Leftovers give you two separate good feelings. When you first put them away, you feel really intelligent. I'm saving food. And then after a month, when hair is growing out of them and you throw them away, you feel really intelligent. I'm saving my life. When you make a sandwich at home, do you reach down past the first three or four pieces of bread to go down and get the good bread? It's kind of a self-preservation thing, you know? What you're really saying is, let my family eat the rotten bread. I'll take care of numero uno. And down you go into the loaf, down looking for the two that you want. A matching pair. And you have to be careful pulling them out so they don't tear. And then when you get them to the top, the upper eight slices fall the other way. I never straighten them out. I think, screw it, let them think a burglar made a sandwich. <laughs> Not my job, straightening out the bread. <laughs> Gotta tell me, in the refrigerator, who is it, please, that puts into the refrigerator the half-gallon containers of milk with only that much left in them? I get one of those every time. Hey, here's some milk. God, not enough to drink. Better put that back, huh? I know my responsibility. When I was a kid, I was known as a fussy eater. Fussy eater. That's what they called it in my house. He's a fussy eater. Fussy eater is a euphemism for big pain in the ass. I would say, I don't like that. Why? They wanted reasons. <laughs> well, you don't always have a reason. I don't know. I know I don't like it. And I know that if I ate it, I would like it even less. You like it, you eat it. <laughs> then they would try to corner me with logic. How do you know you don't like it? if you've never even tried. It came to me in a dream. <laughs> there were some things I didn't like because of the way they sounded. I just didn't like the name of it. Imagine that, I got away with that shit for a year and a half. <laughs> Don't sound right to me, Ma. Say that again. <gasps> I don't like that. To this day, there are some things I can't eat because I don't like the way they sound. I still cannot eat yogurt. <laughs> I can't eat anything with a Y and a G in it. <laughs> squash. You want some squash? <laughs> Shit, no! <laughs> 
Sounds like somebody sat on dinner, you know? How about some wheat germ? Germ? Horseradish. Ah! Eggplant. Well, what is it, an egg or a plant? Tell it to make up its mind and come on back. Something I don't like the sound of, succotash. What'd you call me, you fuck? Look out, hey, hey, hey. Hey, be cool, hey, be cool. It's lima beans and corn, man. You know something else doesn't sound very right? Head cheese. I can't even look at the sign. I'll be down near the baloney. You look at it. <laughs> then there are some things that sound too funny to eat. Some things are too humorous to swallow. Guacamole. That sounds like something you yell when you're on fire. Guacamole! Well, sounds like something you can't remember the name of. Where's that little guacamole I had here? <laughs> Something else sounds too funny to eat. Garbanzo beans. <laughs> I mean, that's the first four letters of the word garbage in there. <laughs> hey, did you take out the garbanzo beans? <laughs> and of course, the funniest food, kumquats. <laughs> I don't even bring them home anymore. I sit there laughing and they go to waste. Then I began to realize there were some things I didn't like because of the way they looked. That's a little more rational. The family was glad I had arrived at this new plateau. I don't like that. That don't look right to me. Did you make that, Ma? Is there a picture of it in the cookbook? I bet it don't look like that. Some things, let's face it, just don't look right, you know? Of course, there are some people who eat anything. I understand that. That's the other end of the spectrum. Some guys eat anything. So those guys in the Air Force, I'll eat anything. What do you got? What is it? Never mind. Just give me some. It's rat's asshole, Don. <laughs> well, it sure makes a hell of a fondue. Not me, folks. I don't eat anything I don't recognize immediately. If I've got to ask questions, fuck it, I pass, you know. I'm not here to make inquiries. I come here to goddamn eat. Now give me something I recognize, like a carrot. I can trust a carrot. Certain things don't look right. You ever been going down the buffet line and suddenly here's a big pile of yellow shit? Something you ain't never seen before. I don't know what it is. I'm not gonna ask either, but I am gonna look at it. Cause other people are eating of it. And I've noticed the average pile of yellow shit on the buffet has about five ingredients in it, but they're all yellow. That means four of them gave up. Now then there are some things I don't like the looks of even though I know what they are. Sliced tomatoes. I just don't care for the way they look. Looks like a little pink bicycle tire, you know? Well, I don't eat bicycle tires. Why should I eat a little pink one? The real trouble with tomatoes, sliced tomatoes especially, is that they don't look like they're finished developing yet. You know, looks like they're still in the larva stage. There's thousands of seeds in there and a whole bunch of jelly looking stuff. <laughs> it's like that stuff at the end of an egg. <sighs> Uh, get it off my plate. Uh, it's slimy. Uh. And I know it's not the end of an egg. It's the beginning of a chicken. Hen come. Ah! Oh, I'm fun in the coffee shop. Lobsters and crabs, they don't look like food to me either. Anything that's crawling toward me sideways with big pinchers, you know, ha, hey, that don't make me hungry. 
In fact, my instinct is step on that fuck. <laughs> step on that big thing before he gets to the children. They look like they mean business. Frog's legs. I can never order them. I keep wondering, what did they do with the rest of the frog? <laughs> what do they do? Do they give them little dollies and send them back out onto the street to beg? <laughs> you know. Try to return them to a normal life. The trouble is, the Dollies for Froggies program is underfunded. <laughs> Boy, they're doing something with them. You never see it on the menu. Frog torso. <laughs> and oysters. I cannot eat oysters or clams. Not for the reason you mentioned, which is... <laughs> but because when I look at an oyster, I think, Hey, somebody lives in there. That's somebody's little house. I'm not gonna break in on somebody just to eat them, come on. We've got laws against that. That's breaking and eating, I believe. Don't get me wrong, if an oyster slips and falls out of his shell, I'll eat that motherfucker in a minute. I got no mercy on a clumsy mollusk. But I'm not going in after somebody. Hey, he might be making a pearl. He might have just brought home a Heath kit and cleaned off the tabletop. Not my job to mess with an oyster.